place. And that's why public art is so important because it creates those little aha places and moments as we kind of go around our communities. And it took a long time for cities to realize how important public art really is. And we're beginning to see that happening all across California and in, other and in other parts of the country as well. So it's a very important thing that adds a layer of richness to our community. And uh, today we're going to hear what Los Altos is thinking about. Okay, so go ahead, Maddie. All right. So um, I'm Maddie McBurney, and I'm on the Arts Commission, and we're um, creating a public art master plan this year, which take, has taken us many years to get City Council to approve. And we have a consultant working on it, and it should be done by sometime in September. So I'm, my goal is one of our um, work plan things is to do outreach and education. So this is mostly about outreach and education to our community to let them know that public art is more than just bronze sculptures and that there's lots of beautiful public art and it can create place. So what is place making? It's using the arts to develop an area where people want to live, work, and congregate. Um, so a lot of the examples are going to be from other cities because we want to think bigger, bigger picture, bigger places, not just local artists, we want local artists, but others. It creates a brand for a community. So this is a trestle uh, bridge in uh, Madrid, Iowa. This is what it looks like at night. So it's a pretty cool piece of art. Public art can shape the quality of life and spirit. So this was a piece made by, um, it's called Spoon Ridge and Cherry by Klaus Oldenburg. He was a very famous artist in the 60s. He did a lot of pop art. So it's a giant spoon over a pond or a lake and the cherry is a fountain. So water comes out of the spout of the cherry. He, it's an 11 acre park in Minneapolis and creates beautiful public art. Um, it builds a stronger sense of place. If you've never been to Chicago, then you haven't seen this, but if you have, it's an awesome giant uh, stainless steel bean. It's called Cloud Gate, designed by an Indian-born British artist named Anish Kapoor. It's located in AT&T Plaza in Millennium Park in Chicago, and when you stand under it, you just feel like a little tiny nothingness because it's like standing under a rubber tree. It's just giant. It reflects you. It reflects all the people around it. And, and day and night, it's beautiful. This is a project in San Francisco. I'm sure you've seen these. The hearts, they're all over. It originally started in 2004 as a fundraiser for General Hospital, San Francisco General Hospital, their foundation. They hired or they solicited 131 hearts, uh, artists, sorry, they solicited the 131 artists to paint the hearts and they were displayed around San Francisco for three months and then they were auctioned to businesses and individuals. It was really successful, so they do this annually. Um, we're hoping maybe we could do something like this for Los Altos, like an apricot or some other idea. So we, it, it can represent pride and, and community. This piece by Janet Uckelman, she is a world-renowned artist. She went and studied in India and learned how to make uh, netting for f with the fishermen. She learned how to do netting, she came back. She designed this, it's called Her Secret is Patience. It was commissioned by the city of Phoenix. It's located in a large plaza park. In the daytime, it looks like just fish netting, it's white, and then at nighttime, it has this LED lighting that's beautiful and uh, majestic. Maddie, mm -hmm. um, that artist also designed uh, Terminal 2 at SFO as you walk in, and the, the uh, requirement was, of course, people just taking their shoes off and it's stuffy, so how do you create movement without any movement in that? So the next time you're in Terminal 2, it is a bad place. Also, I'm going to bring that up too, it's her big thing is that she likes to create it so that it moves with nature or whatever the circumstances is there too. Um, also it creates um, community experience. So this is called Bus Home by Dennis Oppenheim. It's in uh, one of it, the town that has all the roller coasters in Southern California. 
it's a bus shelter. So if you look right here, you can see the little tiny benches. So it's a really huge, iconic piece. It's about, um, you know, you get on the train or the bus, you go on this trip, and then you always end up back home. So you arrive home after your journey. Um, we're working on a downtown visioning process to create that sense of place and identity. These kinds of pieces can create economic vitality. Movie directors choose these iconic public art for shooting films. Tourists come just to see them. Um, they get their selfies made in front of them, etc. <laughs> it creates economic vitality by invigorating public space. So I love this piece. It's um, made with recycled plastic lids. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a little bit of public art from other communities. Since we have a lot of benches in Los Altos, I would like to show you some alternatives that could be very creative pieces of public art. This is a mosaic piece, just a basic painted piece. Fencing. So whatever we do fencing, we can think creatively even about fencing. If you look back here, there's a pool. So this has to be a certain height when you have a pool or any kind of enclosure. Maybe you someday will have a dog park. So you can think creatively about that or even the fencing along the Foothill Expressway. Um, this is just a piece to show you what things look at night. Large, lit up, public art can bring people out to play and interact at nighttime. This is also a um, example of not a very interesting building back here, but when you add public art, it creates um, vitality in the daytime. This is stainless steel, so sunlight creates shadow, and in the night it has beautiful colors. Another example of Children's Hospital, um, where the artist was included in the process of designing this building, which we're trying to put in our master plan too, um, here you have a sculpture outside, then you have a mural on the building, and then inside the design is on the inside of the windows. When you're inside, you see this too, and it creates this beautiful piece. Lighted public art, so this is called Brilliant. It's in Palo Alto, you can go see it. It's between the uh, Palo Alto Art Center and the library on Newell Road, and at daytime, it's stainless steel like this one. In nighttime, these change color. You can go up, they have a little button you can push, and they, they'll change color, and it's really, really a beautiful piece. These are all words, so it's kind of a great piece to go between the library and art. And there's probably, I think there's probably like seven or eight of those shapes. Residents um, are asked to interact with this piece of public art. Jen Lewin creates these technology pieces. These are plastic round, in the daytime, they don't look like much, but at nighttime, when the uh, community interacts with them, they light up and change color. They can be rented, or they can become a permanent piece as well. Where, where is that? She, I don't know where this one is. She does these all over the world. This is in probably Philadelphia or somewhere, because they have a lot of money for public art. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've learned a lot, like the certain cities that have been doing this, Seattle and Philadelphia, they're big. So we love our trees in Los Altos, so why not create a season of color at night? Um, this is not fall, but it looks like fall just because of the colors of the light. And here's another way to make it look like winter. So just by creating lighting, you can have these wonderful things. This is projecting onto nature. So this is just a piece of art this artist created, abstract, and it's projected onto trees and creates this kind of cool um, lighting. This is a tunnel with projected light as well. So a concrete tunnel, and then the light is projected on there. So I went to when they built the bridge and the tunnel on Foothill Expressway at Layla Corners. I tried, I tried to get yeah. public art, but because yeah. the uh, county will pay for that, but it didn't happen. Okay, um, Light Swarm is made by Future Cities Lab. So Future C Cities Lab and Makinique, they're in San Francisco, and they did the Golden, or not the Golden Gate, the Bay Bridge with the lighting project that changes. <laughs> at first, that was going to be temporary and now they've decided that they're gonna keep it. So this is another cool thing about temporary art. Sometimes it becomes permanent if the community likes it enough. And it's, um, 
there it's it's move when you move it moves so by movement and sound both inside and out these pieces change and move around they're um, LED strips they're laser cut skins made out of recyclable PET plastic and synthetic paper so that's an indoor piece only now it's just looking from the inside out so community art projects can be really fun um, sometimes if you look here this is previous ex previously existing brick and then they just had the children come in and paint them colors they create a wall back here sort of a giant sized table and it just created this little fun area to be creative recently we did a community art project for this new donated sculpture called um, conversation piece by Kevin Box um, we had a fourth grade teacher at Almond School came and she her fourth graders taught us how to do origami cranes we made about a, a thousand crane no we made a hundred cranes they made a thousand cranes at school and um, here is like Jenny that's her and these are her fourth graders teaching it's awesome teaching grandparents and parents here's a mom she was speaking Russian with her son we had lots of food it was over in front of Citrella it's really a lot of fun um, this is a neighborhood art project in San Francisco, a mosaic staircase. So this is a plain staircase. The neighbor across the way, looking at it, got tired of it being plain. So she got the neighbors together. They hired an artist to design it. And then the community actually installed it many over a long period of time. Also, this can be another form of community art where the community makes the panels on mesh and then the artists put the whole thing together. I had the opportunity to go to the public art convention in uh, York, Alabama, and they don't have a lot of money. And uh, they, uh, I got to meet Matthew Mazzola, the artist architect. He got to go there with the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, he created this place by meeting with the community. They met and they decided we want a place where we can go play music and have fun. We don't have anywhere to do that and entertain. So he found this dilapidated house. They took it apart and then he built this house. It's called Open House. So it's a piece of public art and the community can open it themselves. And then once it's all the way open, it becomes this uh, bench area with a screen behind it for projecting they can play music and now they have a really cool outdoor space for music so oh, that's cool. that's very very, very cool. nice uh, process to work with community and create what they want um, data strongly indicates the cities with an active dynamic culture are attractive you need to be more attractive our benefits our community engages creates attracts connects artists and enhances appreciation for art so one of my goals being a public artist is not everyone can go to a museum people in Los Altos can but it's nice to be able to see it and learn about it and talk about it even if you don't like it um, Chrysalis Launcher is a gateway project um, Carolyn Woods created for this artist community in a dilapidated area in Florida um, the artists came in and wanted to recreate it, but they wanted to get people to come there. So she created this piece called um, Chrysalis Launcher. It's about the metamorphosis of a butterfly, transformation of the place. This is what it looks like in day, night, and close up. It's distinctive. So I think Los Altos could use something like this gateway at uh, San Antonio and then have it go all along San Antonio to get to our town. So the light posts continue the theme, which is part of master planning, get your uh, theme going. Creative cross crosswalk. So San Francisco did a neighborhood project where they had every neighborhood uh, compete with each other, so to speak, for crosswalk design, and then they implemented them. So this is in kind of near Laurel Heights. This is the Castro. <laughs> This is a crosswalk at a school crossing in Madrid. So all they did was add color in between the white striping, very simple. This is speed bump. <laughs> and then there's some clever, you know. And then this one is in Los Angeles and Koreatown, so it has kind of that nice Asian feel. All right, this is um, Colin Selig um, was 
commissioned to do temporary pieces like this in Palo Alto. You can go see these, they're still there. Um, then the people like them and they want to keep them, so they're doing a Kickstarter program um, to try to pay for the benches. So he salvages propane tanks. He, they're playful, durable, ecological. He um, also creates planter boxes and ballards. So he takes those propane tanks and he makes them into, oh wait, where'd my slide go? Oh. <laughs> I don't know what happened. You saw it. The orange, one, the orange one somehow disappeared. I don't know where it went. So um, technology, public art, and place making. So I thought these are really cool. They're solar powered Wi-Fi stations. They're, um, so the solar power makes everything work and then they're a place to sit and congregate as well. So it, it can just like break up a plaza that might be, um, you know, kind of boring. <laughs> All right, interactive chalkboard. These are temporary art pieces. There's also, um, before I die, I would like to, and then the community or the people come along and write in and fill in what they would like to do. You could also do what would be your good deed for today, or what was your good deed for today. There's all kinds of words you could put on there. We're, we're thinking of doing, we would love to be able to do this somewhere in town. Wall murals, everybody knows wall murals. They can be designed by an artist, made by the community, or the artists do all of the work. Interactive uh, temporary chalk art, fun for kids. We saw that one. So moving into the future, what's coming up? We're doing a citywide master arts plan. It will provide opportunity, we hope, for quality commissioned public art. Right now we have a public art loan program where People just submit their art, they're on loan for two years, and then they go away, and we get from quality from this to this, it's okay. So I, that's why I think we put this in, because this is so controversial. So many people like it, so many people don't like it. It just coincidentally lights up eerily at night because of the street light, it's not lit up or anything. Um, if, you know, we like Kinetic Gateway, all these different kinds that I've showed you. The master plan will, will have strategic planning. We're hoping it will have a percent for public art. That way we have a budget. Well, once you have a master plan, it's much easier to get grants. And then it will help us also define creating public-private partnerships. Some other things we're thinking about are maps for, we have maps these maps they're kind of old-fashioned but we have these if you want them so they're they're where the public art is now but it's changing all the time um, more community art projects we'd like to be able to purchase permanent pieces y'all need money for all these things um, our website needs a big overhaul and I kind of stuck this one in that wouldn't be nice to have a city staff person um, yeah. to just focus on art Financing public art, again, um, this is here because I wanted to show you this uh, artistic bike rack competition we did last year and this year. It was super successful. The community designed the, uh, the art, then the art was selected by the community and the Arts Commission, and then we had sponsorship. So this was sponsored by the Los Altos Community Foundation. This was sponsored by uh, Lacey, formerly known as Passerelle. And Anyway, and then this one was by a property owner and she saw it and she said if it gets chosen I'll sponsor it and I want to dedicate it to my dad because he called my sisters and I a bunch of magpies So she she really uh, it, it resonated with her and I think that's really cool that um, People see something and it, it it resonates with them. So our master plan is going to be coming up I gave you all the cards so you would do the survey. If you haven't done it, I brought paper copies if you prefer it. Um, it really makes a difference for us if we hear what you would like to have. Uh, community is fine by its people. Let's create meaning together. Let's get some professional artists to, who actually make a living doing this <laughs> and have them come create things. If you have any questions, let me know. This piece was here in our park for a long time. It was here for SF Mom on the go, and now it is at SF Moment in San Francisco and outside, if you haven't seen it. It's pretty cool that we had it first. Yeah. And um, I wanted to show you the bike rap um, competition that won this year. We just were a little behind schedule getting them installed, but this one's going in front of the library, like right outside that door where those hoops are. 
and then this is a shoe that will go in front of the running shoe store on Main Street. They don't look like this. The final ones, these are just the drawings the community presented to us. The squirrel, I'm hoping, uh, since we're putting the owl in the library, I think we need to move this to the Neutra House. There's nothing, maybe not at the Neutra House, but in that area, there's no bike parking whenever I go to a meeting um, in that area. I don't have any bike parking there. And this is a ballet bar. So it's gonna be one color pink, and it's going in front of a dance studio at Loyola Corners. And then this uh, piece, it's called Leaves of Change, and it was inspired by the leaves changing downtown. So it's going in front of Belanger. There's an existing, I don't know, can you guys even see these? Sorry. Yeah. Um, it's going in front of the Boulanger where there's a lot of bike parking and um, not enough bike parking there. Okay, so that's it. Anybody have any questions or? Oh, yes, yes. No, I have two questions. You had talked, uh, after um, the singer bus left, you talked about doing some kinetic art in uh, community. So where is that on? So we haven't, we actually are putting a kinetic piece in the plaza where they have this one, I forget, what's it called, Village Park. Um, so there's a piece there that's stationary and the same artist presented one that turns and spins so there's going to be one there but so far we can only put up what people donate we don't have any money so that's, that's our goal well that was my second question and we moved walter singer because we do want to do some either temporary or public public pieces there and he's kind of in the way we just haven't found one like there's one we just got we wanted to put there but we knew no one from the city council would approve of it so I lose track of these things, but at one time, uh, council was talking about taking a percentage of construction fees or whatever, and then giving it to public art. Where is that? Okay, so that went through city council, and it was getting your approval, and then the city of Oakland got a lawsuit, a federal lawsuit. It wasn't a state lawsuit, but it was a federal lawsuit against the percent for art saying that it was against freedom of speech for contractors telling them what to do or something it's really stupid but they at the time the attorney we had thought it, it would be better to wait so she advised the council to wait even though it's still a california state thing it was fine for the state of california it was just a federal and it's kind of disappointing the timing on that one but what does chris do um well, it's going to be in our master plan. So <laughs> the percent for art is going to be in our master plan. That Oakland lawsuit went away, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's lost it. So right. We'll, yeah. We're free to move forward. Yes. So we're going to still have it in our, it's better if it's in a master plan. What happened with the master plan is they said, why don't you guys write all the policies? You're really good at that. And so we started, and the first thing we did was the percent for art. And so then once we did the percent for art, city council at that time said, uh, well, maybe you need a master plan. So, so now we're doing it the right way. Master plan to plan rather than piecemeal all the little policies together. Is there a percent requirement for city projects like a new community center? Yes, yeah, so I would like it to be public and private development. That's what we're okay. hoping to put in our master plan. But for city projects, that's a public development. Is that, but is it well, well, the, what's the percent oh. set aside? Uh, well, it can be different or it can be the same. I don't think we have any. But is we don't have anything current? right now. Nothing. Oh, there's nothing. No, no, no. Not there's even nothing. for the no. There's not even a project. CIP regular budget, nothing. We get $10,000 to install these sculptures. We pay the artist $1,000. It's kind of, it's kind of humiliating. If you're not this, I wouldn't do it. Because <laughs> okay. they have to move them here. They have to install them. Well, the city makes a little pad and then they have to take them away and they have to insure them all for a thousand dollars so it's kind of it's a ridiculous amount right so anyway that's the budget they have is ten thousand dollars for a year <laughs> yeah uh, i consider myself to be sort of a highly visual person when it comes to trying to absorb things or to answer questions i took your survey online okay and there wasn't a single illustration, of course, or but you don't know no example of what you were meaning. You said, do you like this kind of material, like wood or metal or whatever? And I, I 
I just really wish I could have seen some examples. I really appreciated seeing the examples here. And one thought you might consider, there's a whole art wall in this building. It's along yes. the entryway there. Mm -hmm. And it might be that you could take that for a period of time and have, your, have a survey based on examples that you would show there and perhaps get more information in response because I was frankly at a loss. I also noticed from your uh, presentation this morning that we are talking apparently about contemporary art exclusively. In other words, you're not you're not reaching back to something that would be reproduced of the old masters, for example. I didn't know that. I, 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 I see what you're doing now, which is just contemporary, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I didn't know that when I did the survey. So I'm it's saying, not necessarily, I'm just showing contemporary because we have traditional art here. We have a lot of traditional bronze sculptures, so most people see that. So we have the Olympic wannabes, we have the Thinker, which is a reproduction, and then we have the big bronze sculpture in Shout Park with the military. Creative um, Liberty. Yeah. yeah, creative. And so those are not, we're not opposed to keeping those. It's just I'm trying to show what we don't have. That's all. Again, just if you could make it somehow more visual. Yeah, I felt the same way. Like when she did the survey, I said, well, how are people going to know like how to answer these questions because they don't even know what public art is. And so that we have a consultant. And her theory is that if you give people examples, then that's what they think they're going to get or they want. And she wants people to think about it and maybe look it up. But I, I know, I, <laughs> I don't know. I am like you. I'm a visual person. I'm a visual person too. And that's why I'm doing this because I think it's Thank important you. to show people what public art looks like, you know, and all the varieties of public art there are. Yeah, I totally agree. Yes. One way to actually think about doing that, if you were to do a display here, is. We're, I'm on the uh, downtown uh, green steering committee, and we're going to be. We have a survey tool that's part of the peak democracy system, mm -hmm. and so you could have just a place where people can, with their iPhone, go in and take the survey while they're looking at the art on the wall. Yeah, that's a, that's what I wanted to do at the farmers market. I okay. wanted to do like an iPad thing where they could look at pictures, yeah. and then, uh, but it didn't happen. Many, I uh, applaud. I'm going to try that though. In the green. <laughs> This is a group, of course, that, that um, is really appreciates planning and having an ink on paper plan. So, in many ways, the Arts Council doing this, or Arts Commission, is really pioneering for whether it's transportation or downtown. And I can't imagine that there would be many people that would object to, to what you're putting together. So, hats off to you and your group. This. The Los Angeles Community Coalition focuses on the greater downtown, and of course, you know, come September, October, the, the results from visioning and, the, of course, the community center group. How can we help you, right? How can we collaborate with you in terms of timing of some of this to make sure that there is a level of art in, in this visioning and whatever plan comes out of the visioning? Well, I think the way you can help the most is when it comes in front of city council, it will be available for you to read, and if you support it, let city council know you support it, because I think that's the hardest part for us, even just getting a sculpture put somewhere, is getting city council to say, oh yeah, that looks good, fine. Yeah. So that's our, our biggest hurdle as city council, and I was telling you earlier that this has been really great showing the community, but I've had a hard time showing it to city council unless they happen to be at a meeting. So I'm reaching out to three people who have not seen it who are you know, kind of on the fence of negativity, and so I need to like show it to them so that they can understand before the master plan comes to them. You know, that's my goal. So if you can tell other people that what you saw today, like when you're in conversation talking about downtown, talk about how it can create place. It can create place and beautiful and beauty. But it has to be in the planning stages. It can't be like plop there after. Right? It can't so be plop there after. So maybe just to, to take a less right, if, if, if you see it when it comes on the city council agenda, shoot a note to Sholly, and then Sholly, you know, so the okay. committee supports it, then they would blast out. To okay, good. That's a good idea. Like I will do that. Okay. Do, you have, do you have a rough sense of when it's going to likely come to council? It's <laughs> supposed to in September, but. Okay. I mean, we have a debt. We have a goal because she's on a. She's hired to do this on a. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. She only gets this much money, this yep. much amount of time. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. 
So um, some public art happily popped up recently at Grant Park um, on a wall. I noticed a sort of a mural or something, which is really very pleasant. Tell us about how that came to be there. Was it a politicized process, and how did it? So which one, the dog or the mosaic? Well, the dog and the mosaic. OK, so the dog is a donated uh, sculpture loan. It's made out of recycled tarts. Oh, yeah. And um, it'll be there for two years. So that just came as a call for art. It came in front of our commission. We liked it. We wanted to put it somewhere. And Grant doesn't have anything down right. there. So we chose there. And then the mosaic was a donated project by their Cis Los Altos mosaic, or I don't know if they're just Los Altos, they're a mosaic group. And they came and said, we like to, we each make these uh, sunflowers and we like to donate them to Los Altos. So we made them come back with a plan. And it's kind of an interesting story. Uh, they were gonna put them up and it's a big wall. And so we said, they wanted to paint it this sky blue color behind the flowers. So the flowers popped and we said, sure, yeah, do that. It's kind of a weird thing. They went to do it and apparently someone in the maintenance public works said, you can't use blue because it's a gang color. Yeah. So I went to, I had to go speak with the city manager about it because I said, you know, this is weird, like that a maintenance person can be telling, I don't know, it, it, maintenance might not be the right word to be using, but um, someone is telling her it's a gang color. And I said, we have buildings painted blue. Isn't there a building downtown painted blue? The, the um, skateboard or the orange uh, yeah, so, one of those yeah. is blue? Anyway, I said, that's just weird. And so they painted it beige and they put those green things and I think it looks terrible. Well, I think the mosaic looks really good, but it would have popped with a blue background. Yes, it, it would have. Now, did that project, I mean, was it politicized? Did the council have to approve it? or Yes, it? yes. So the process is the, the donation, there's a donation policy so that the person donating has to fill that out. They have to come to the art commission. The art commission has to approve it or disapprove it. Then if we approve it, then it goes to city council and then they have to approve it. They have to approve the location, everything. So um, they were a little hesitant because the wall was so big, but they in the end supported it. But it didn't get installed the way we approved it. So I'm sort of protesting the blue thing because I said, you, that's not, and I, the only way I found that out is I went to show this to the Los Altos Art Club and someone that did the mosaic project came up to me and told me, and I asked her, why didn't you guys paint it blue? That's what we approved. And she told me that, but our city liaison person did not tell me that. So that's kind of weird. You know, I just thought, oh, so we're trying to remedy that. It's still better than the blank wall. I think so too. I think so, so too. I think it's great. And I mean, as much as we can try to add to the city, we are. And if you have a question, sorry, Florida. Sure. Um, so, First Street, um, you know, First Street Green area mm -hmm. sounds like a wonderful, you know, hoping that it will happen. Sounds like a wonderful yeah. place and a gallery place for public art. And yeah. I just wondered, is there, I don't know if it's opening a can of worms, but is there some conversation with Lacey or with whatever to see about that happening? I think of the, 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 it's not, you mean the, the new park or the one that's temporary? No, not the temporary, the, the, the new one. Oh yeah, don't worry, I've been in conversation okay. with them. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, they have my whole folder of what okay. public art. They're like talking to professionals, they're actually talking to different people that are in this slideshow too. So um, it's, it, it'll be interesting to see if, what they choose. But they're also working with the Exploratorium, so. Who knows how that will evolve? Oh, uh, but I'm hoping they do something really good with public art there. Every time I go to any of their meetings, I say, "Don't give up public art." <laughs> so even if it, you know, maybe no matter what happens with it, there will be some public art there. Yeah. Be great. When I started on the commission, I would go to every Larry can attest to this, but I would go to like planning commission meetings, design review, and say, "Where's the public art?" I just say that I'd get up and go, "Where's the public art?" Because it's never there. In any planning for our city, it's never, ever, ever there. So it needs to be in an organ. It needs to be in a master plan. Yeah. Um, this is just a comment. I really like the ones where you brought children in, overseen by an artist. And I think I made the comment that this uh, public art connects the artists to town. I think when you include the children or the people in creating it, it, it 
um, connect them to the town more too. Mm -hmm. The sense of identity and ownership and, and creativity there. Um, and then also just, I recently went to Mitchell Park in, in um, my Palo Alto. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome what they did there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's one area where children can, or anybody, because it's very inclusive. Um, like that arch thing that you walk under. And you make music, yeah. so not just for the visual, but for the people, mm -hmm. the sound people. They're in there, in the moment, creating. They have people on wheelchairs. You see the video about it? I yeah. sent that video and that clip to all the city council uh, about that. And I said, you can go there and interact with it. I the video, the artist, she did the video on the opening day of the opening, and she okay. had people in wheelchairs. She had old, she had all kinds of people in this video. It was very, wow. very awesome. All their bollards in front of their library are owls. Okay. They're the, um, or maybe it's not that library, but the things, you know, that block people from running in, there are these stainless steel owls. They're so oh, and you can cool. them. So even things like that, you know, that right. just yeah. you just can yes. make it be really creative. It's, it doesn't have to be just a cement concrete yeah. thing. I mean, the Egyptians were cats. You know, yeah. I, mean, I can't wait something. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to think uh, creatively. Are there any other questions? Thank you guys and thank you for your, all your suggestions. We will, I will get to the green and I will do that. I'm gonna suggest we do that at the library. That's a really good idea to have some outreach like that. Mm -hmm. It worked with the Artistic Biker Access where we put all the art and have people vote. We put all the designs up in the library and people voted and that's how we chose these. We found people love animals. People love animals and lots of those. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so there was a possibility that someone from Festival of Lights, and here you are. So we have a quick announcement. Are you Marie? Please. Hi. I'm Marie Bax, and I'm a volunteer with the Festival of Lights Parade. Normally, uh, our costume tryouts, we know about 75 costumes in our parade. We have been granted the use of a grant of one of their classrooms for the last 10 years to be able to move our costumes in for people to try the costumes on. We only have one costume per character, so if you don't fit, you don't get to be that character that year. You have to go on a diet. So, you were a uh, toy soldier, weren't you? No. Okay. Come on, admit it. <laughs> Moving right along. But this year, um, the city of Los Altos is going to renovate the four classrooms at Grant School. And the dates they have chosen is September through